Disturbing news out of the Middle East. An Iranian attack against Israel is imminent. That's the warning from U.S. intelligence sources. They believe it's not a matter of if, but when. Well, now a troubling development in the ceasefire negotiations suggests that more hostages might have died in Gaza. CBN's Chris Mitchell has the details from Jerusalem. Those intelligence sources believe Iran could launch missiles or drones, maybe both, toward Israel at any moment. In a press briefing, Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant told CBN News that Israel can respond quickly and decisively to an attack, regardless of where it originates in the Middle East, including Iran. Middle East expert Avi Melamed says Iran will probably direct one or more of its proxies in the region to retaliate against Israel for a strike that killed Iranian General Mohammad Zahedi in its consulate in Damascus. Melamed points out that by not attacking Israel directly, Iran is shielded from the consequences. We have to remember yet, this is a very sophisticated regime. One of its major pillars of modus operandi is the concept of strategic patience, and they may apply the same uh, concept in the context of the retaliation. Namely, they will wait uh, for the right time and the right circumstances, and it doesn't necessarily have to be tomorrow. The Biden administration's support of Israel's war in Gaza has faltered. But the president says the U.S. will stand solid with the Jewish state against Iran's threats. Our commitment to Israel's security against these threats from Iran and its proxies is ironclad. Meanwhile, President Biden is calling on the terror group to act on a proposal to free hostages and kick off a six-week ceasefire. They need to move on the proposal that's been made. And as I said, uh, We'll get these hostages home where they belong. The proposal called for the release of 40 hostages at the outset, but Hamas has reportedly said it doesn't have 40 hostages that fit the criteria, causing concerns that many more have been killed. In Washington, House Republicans working on a resolution supporting the Jewish state and its war against Hamas spoke out against President Biden's criticism of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's handling of the war. Joe Biden has transformed into an anti-Israel president. There's really no other way to, to, to characterize it. He's more concerned seemingly with placating the anti-Semitism in his, in his base than, than standing with our historic and vitally important ally. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. Well, please pray for Israel today. Pray for, for their peace and for their protection. Uh, the, these are horrific moments in time. I never thought I'd see the U.S. turn its back on Israel, uh, but it's literally unfolding, and it's all because of politics and, and counts of vote, votes in Michigan. Uh, it, it's absolutely incredible to, to see this kind of activity where you're abandoning the long-term strategic ally in the Middle East, the only democracy there, who has been with us uh, throughout the decades. And you just wonder, what, what are we doing uh, pandering to votes on that level? It makes no sense. Well, in other news, from the state legislature to the national presidential campaign, an Arizona law restricting abortion is galvanizing both sides of the debate. John Jessup has more on that story from our CBN News Bureau in Washington. John? Thanks, Gordon. With weeks to go before the law goes into effect, Arizona lawmakers are fighting it out in the legislature. Yesterday, Democrats tried to open debate on repealing the law, but the Republican majority blocked the move. The measure, on the books since 1864, bans abortions throughout pregnancy, except to protect the life of the mother. It's also put abortion front and center of the 2024 presidential race. Former President Donald Trump blasted the law. Trump also said he will not sign a national law restricting abortion, reversing course from a 2016 pledge. President Biden, when asked what he would say to the people of Arizona, replied, quote, elect me. Well, here in Washington, a delay in the impeachment trial of DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. Republican House Speaker Mike Johnson is holding off sending articles of impeachment to give Senate Republicans more time to prepare. 
Uh, meanwhile, Mayorkas testified on Capitol Hill yesterday about the department's 2025 budget. As CBN national security correspondent Caitlin Burke reports, Republicans took the opportunity to grill the secretary with accusations of failed policies at the border. Uh, you and the Biden administration over the past few years have reversed the secure policies that were working. You stopped the border wall construction, expanded parole, allowed for millions of individuals, as we've heard, including known inspected terrorists, cartel members, unforgivable levels of fentanyl and illicit drugs and substances into our country. Yet again, you sit before this committee and ask for out-of-touch priorities again and refuse to take accountability for the total failure that you have allowed for at the southern border. Mayorkas defended his record and the agency, pointing a finger back at Congress for basically ignoring a bipartisan bill designed to fix an immigration system he labels as fundamentally broken. The bipartisan uh, bill that a group of senators worked on, I had the privilege of s being seated with them, would have delivered a consequence regime like no other. It would have been the first time since 1996 that our broken system would have delivered the much needed fixes that we need to fully enforce the law. Some key issues flagged by Republicans in the proposed budget include a cut in funding from last year despite a surge in migrant encounters, a request for fewer detention beds than the previous year, and money for only 350 new Border Patrol agents. The secretary pointed out that due to congressional delays, he submitted the 2025 budget request before they passed funding for 2024, timing which hindered him from predicting more accurate figures. At every stage of the apprehension, removal process, and everything in between that we would need resources, more Border Patrol agents, more support personnel so we can ensure that those Border Patrol agents are out in the field doing the enforcement work that they signed up and for which they are so skilled to perform. More asylum officers, more immigration and customs enforcement personnel, more detention uh, capacity. Next week, Mayorkas is scheduled to testify before the House Homeland Security Committee, facing many of the lawmakers issuing the loudest calls for his impeachment. Caitlin Burke, CBN News, Washington. All right, thank you, Caitlin. Now to the latest on rising inflation and its impact on families. Prices for everyday goods are 3.5% higher than this time last year. As CBN's Lori Johnson explains, consumers are turning to credit cards to help make ends meet. It comes as no surprise to anyone paying for food, rent, or gasoline that prices are higher. With March inflation higher than predicted, there are new doubts on the Fed's goals to lower interest rates. It is a hot print and it is sticky. There is no, again, there's no indication that these rates are going substantially lower anytime soon. That means buyers will continue to pay higher interest on things like home and car loans. So what's causing it? It's simply the government spending too much money because the government also controls our currency. And that's a deadly combination. The typical American household spends $270 more per month on everyday goods than one year ago and over $1,000 per month more from three years ago before inflation shot up to over 9% in 2022. The rising prices mean more Americans are using credit cards than ever before. The average household balance is about $11,000. All combined, our nationwide outstanding credit card debt is a staggering new high, $1.3 trillion. Most troubling is that nearly half of users can't pay their monthly balance. It means specifically that people are relying a lot on credit um, to get by month to month. And that is a not a great long-term tactic. That's because most annual percentage rates hover around 21%. Credit card debt, debt can snowball very quickly because of the interest rates. A recent survey found one in four Americans feel very stressed about their credit card debt. You can get in over your head very quickly with credit cards. Sometimes you can avoid the pitfalls. You can get a credit card that has a 0% APR on it, and you can do a balance transfer. Or ask for help. Talk to your lenders or your credit card companies. Give them a call if you can't, if you can't pay your bills on time. They want to work with you. In some cases, companies will reduce the minimum payment, interest rate, and fees, as well as offer a structured payment plan. Lori Johnson, CBN News.
more and more Americans sitting on a mountain of debt. Gordon? And that mountain is going to really haunt us going forward. And, and here's, here's sort of a larger economic uh, analysis. The wholesale inflation report came in at 2.1% which is in line with what the Federal Reserve was talking about, and they were talking actively of two rate cuts this year. All of that has been put on hold waiting for these inflation numbers. Now, the average American is like, what does that have to do with me? Well, here's what it has to do with you. If the Federal Reserve cuts interest rates, then that's going to come down to your credit card. And what is the interest rate on your balance on your credit card? If inflation continues, then the Fed's going to have no choice but to raise interest rates. And that's going to affect you because now those payments are going to be higher because the interest rate is higher. Some people are calling for an interest rate, a uh, Fed rate as high as 8% which would absolutely stifle inflation, but for the average American would be a killer. Here's my advice. Please don't put consumer goods on a credit card. You're going to end up paying double for it. Do whatever you can to live within your income, whatever that takes, uh, whatever luxuries, whatever even necessities that aren't really necessities, can you do without? Because if you accumulate credit card, it's going to be something that haunts you for years to come. If interest rates go up, because if there is a war in the Middle East that involves Iran, what is going to happen to the price of oil? It's going to skyrocket. And that, that inflation is going to get baked in. The Fed won't have any choice but to raise rates, and you're going to be spending a whole lot more money on that balance in the years to come.